all right guys welcome back to another episode of everything business right um it's the weekend before the exam and we want to do some revision on the accounting system so let's get right into it all right so these are the topics that they had given um cxc had given that they'll be testing on paper two for this 2021 examination they don't normally do this um but they have provided the list of topics and we will see right here right the accounting system or accounting as a system and so this video is to talk about accounting as a system be sure to join my live tutorial today uh you know to get more information right today that's today july 3 um saturday july 3 2021 all right so let's get right into this so the accounting cycle is the first thing right what is the accounting cycle so the accounting cycle really it is the process It's also called the accounting process right and it consists of three basic steps right so we have the source document which is the first step of the accounting process or the first stage of the accounting process or in the accounting process um, and examples of source documents are like your receipts your bank slips your invoices and then from the accounting from the source documents rather you move to the books of original entry which we will talk about um, then you move to the ledgers right we have three types of ledgers purchases sales and general we have six books of original entry right and then from the ledger we move to the trial balance the trial balance actually acts as a checking system to check if the work that you have done here in the ledgers um you know if it is correct because you know in accounting we we don't want to make mistakes you don't want to make mistakes because you're dealing with money right so the trial balance right is a checking system for the ledgers and then we move on to the final accounts these two accounts here they are called final accounts because we normally prepare them at the end of the accounting period all right so you have the trading and profit and loss account um you have the balance sheet these are final accounts and these are all names by the way right the new names would be the income statement for the trading and profit and loss account and for the balance sheet they would refer to it as the statement of financial position all right and then the process starts all over again so source documents are documents where original information is found right um, as i was saying example your sales and purchases invoice credit notes um, all persons and business that are involved in trading activities are providing a source a service um, use these important documents and some additional examples of source documents include receipts debit note bank paying slips check counterfoil petty cash voucher um, and even letters right or correspondence so when we talk about books of original entry we have six um books of original entry uh you know um there are many 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 textbooks um that that that, that talks about um seven books of original entry i'm fine with that as well right um so we have the sales journal the purchases journal the returns in words journal returns out words journal cash book and the general journal the petty cash book is also seen as a book of original entry but it's just that when i'm teaching it to my students i teach these as the primary books of original entry now the ledgers right um the ledgers or a ledger is a book um, that is used to record a double entry transaction right um, in the ledgers the double entry accounts can be found right and there are three types of ledgers right we have the sales ledger we have the purchases ledger and we have the general ledger right and it is important for you to know what each ledger is used for so the sales ledger the sales ledger is used to record the accounting of debtors the accounts of debtors purchases ledger right is where you would find your creditors account and the general ledger is where you would basically find everything else your expenses your assets um liabilities stuff like that the trial balance now as i was saying earlier the trial balance is a statement that checks the arithmetic accuracy of the ledgers right so it, it checks to see if what you have done in the ledgers if you have done them correctly check for errors and stuff like that right and it is normally prepared at the end of the accounting period or the end of the month um there are errors that the trial balance is unable to pick up but we will talk about that uh, later on so the trading and profit and loss account and the balance sheet or as i say the income statement 
and the statement of financial position right so the trading profit and loss account or the income statement right is a statement that shows the profitability of a firm of a business right the balance sheet or the statement of financial position is a statement that really shows the assets capital and liabilities of a business in other words it shows the accounting equation right now it is important for you to know the classification of accounts that accounts are divided into two types we have personal and impersonal accounts right so personal accounts are the accounts that deal with people and um you know and businesses right like your debtors and your creditors those are personal accounts and then you have impersonal accounts right and in, then impersonal accounts are further divided or is further divided into real and nominal accounts so real accounts are accounts that deal with the assets of a business right the possessions right for example buildings machine computer equipment fixtures fittings so on nominal accounts now they are impersonal accounts that deals with basically everything else you know um your expenses um your revenues right and and and, and so forth so for example sales purchases wages electricity and so on it's very important guys now types of business organizations that you you need to know about um most of you would have known if you have done pob or economics right but for the purely accounting students right you may not have been familiar with this but you need to be familiar with this right so sole trader so a sole trader is basically what they call a one man business it's a it's a business where you have one owner trading um alone normally under his name um a partnership business is an association of 2 to 20 persons who owns a business with the view to make a profit you have limited companies now right limited companies um you know they are legal entities right that have been incorporated and what that means is that they are viewed as a separate legal entity from the owners and that's a good thing for them right there are two types of companies public and private company and the main difference between um the public and private company is the right of of share transfer in a public company you can sell shares to the public in a private company um you can only sell shares privately like to family or to friends the private company is generally also smaller than the public company the public company has a potential to be very very large because it does not have any upper limit on the amount of members the amount of members that you need to start a public company is 7 um you call it you call them shareholders um and the amount of shareholders needed for a private company um is 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 two and but the, the private company does have a upper limit which is 50 and so the private company generally is smaller than the public company then i have non trading organizations which are clubs association and other non profit making entities that really are set up not to make a profit but to look out for the welfare of its members right corporate cooperative society right is a, a legally constituted um business um that is formed primarily for the purpose of furthering the economic welfare of its members well the cooperative society as opposed to the non trading organization the cooperative society um, they they want to make they want to make profits but the thing is that they will share the profits now with or among their members all right um for example credit unions is an example of a cooperative society all right now accounting concepts um accounting concepts are very important right many teachers normally give students this as a assignment right but here we go so we have the historical con cost concept um then this concept states that the assets are normally shown at cost price and for you will always hear accounting teachers talk about maintaining your your assets at cost price and this is where they get it from the historical cost concept money measurement concept and this is just basically self explanatory in accounting we record transactions in money right in terms of money so the accounting is measured in terms of money business entity or the separate entity concept states that the affairs of the business are to be treated separately from the owner's personal activities and and, and a lot of businesses fail because they do not um follow this concept because they they keep into my into mingling their personal activities with the business right and not knowing that they should keep the business activity separate from their personal activity right so the only time their personal activity intermingle with the businesses when they are um should intermingle with the businesses when they are like investing um additional capital or if they need to you know withdraw some money for their personal account and in that case accounts provide um accounting procedures provide 
uh, uh, or make allowance for that, right? So we can record that as drawings, right? And it's that still should not be a lot because then it would rob the business. Dual aspect concept is the next concept, right? It states that there are two aspects of accounting, one represented by assets of a business and the other um, by claims against them. And this is where we get the accounting equation from. And the accounting equation is assets equal capital plus liabilities. Then we have the going concern concept. And this concept assumes that the business will continue for, you know, a long time. Right. Let's face it. Everybody wants their business to continue for a long time. And so this concept assumes that. And so people will prepare their financial records as such consistency concept. And this states that the business should be consistent in recording, in record keeping. Right. And their treatment of accounting records. Um, the prudence concept. It states that the accountant should always be careful when entering accounting information. It is better to underestimate um, or to under understate rather profits than to overstate profits. Right. The realization concept, right? This concept holds the view that profits can can only be made or be realized when um, it is certain of being earned, right? Um, and, and 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 you know there are certain conditions that will help you to understand um, when the profits are actually earned, right? For example, if you are the person who invests the money, stuff like that. Um, the accrual accrual concept so this concept states that the, the net profit is the difference between revenues and expenses incurred in trying to you know earn those revenues right so so this is where we get the calculation of net profit from right so revenues minus expenses would give you your net profit and for those persons who have done income statement already then this is basically the formula that we use to calculate net profit all right thank you for watching see you later for the live marathon